This meeting is being recorded. So ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to the Q1 FI25 post earnings conference call of Brand Concepts Limited. Today on the call from the management we have with us Mr. Abhinav Kumar, full time director and CEO. As a disclaimer, I would like to inform all of you that this call may contain forward looking statements which may involve risk and uncertainties. Also, this is a reminder that this call is being recorded. I would now request the management to detail us about the business, performance highlights for the quarter, the growth plans, and the vision for the coming years, post which we will open the floor for the Q&A. Over to you, Apinav, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Raj. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. A uh, very, very good afternoon. Um, and thank you for joining for the post-result call. Uh, <laughs> so, <coughs> just reflecting on uh, on this quarter's performance, I think uh, uh, looking at uh, the current market conditions of uh, being a little subdued, uh, we've still registered, uh, we've uh, given a good robust growth of 20%, close to 20%, 19 point something um, is the growth that we've registered uh, over the previous quarter as well as the last year's uh, same quarter. So, and this primarily has been on account of uh, where we've been expanding our footprint uh, across all our brands. Uh, the new brands also are going into uh, multiple various locations. So we're expanding the footprint across the country. So uh, on account of business development, we've, uh, we've registered a good growth. Um, However, at the same time, I would also like to say that um, uh, the like to like, which is same store sales growth has been subdued um, as the overall, uh, we've, we've seen lower walk-ins. Um, there was a very bad heat wave across the country, which all of us are aware. So even that heat wave has impacted retail overall, you would have seen that across most of the retail companies. Uh, results in that uh, the sales have been impacted. Um, however, as we speak, uh, uh, there's some silver lining in the gray cloud uh, that uh, the, the retail has started to pick up. So we hope that going forward, things will be a little better. And uh, the company, uh, what I'm happy about is that our, our business development activities are going as per plans and uh, we garnering more and more locations and hence uh, once the market conditions also improve we're going to have a cascading effect of a higher number of doors and hence uh, probably the growth would be a little better um, uh, the margins have been uh, improved from Q4 of course the last preceding quarter but uh, still subdued from the previous same year quarter uh, the reasons remain to be the same as I had explained even during my last call that um, A, same sales uh, growth has been subdued, same store sales have been, uh, the growth has been subdued and hence um, uh, while the the expenses have gone up, but the sales have not matched up to those levels. So there's some bit of a margin pressure over there. Um, apart from that, uh, of course, uh, the other uh, aspects being, uh, uh, you know, uh, the higher royalty uh, still impacting the this thing because it's the old inventory, the season's inventory, which where the royalties have not been able to be loaded, some pre-operative expenses towards uh, the new capacity building and all of that. So uh, the reasons remain to be uh, similar uh, as the last quarter. But uh, very, very hopeful of, uh, uh, you know, uh, covering uh, a lot of this uh, probably in, in uh, the coming quarters if the conditions, if the market conditions improve. Apart from that, this quarter, uh, uh, very recently we announced uh, the acquisition of a new brand. Uh, we've signed up Juicy Couture uh, now. I'm sure I'll get questions on, on Juicy Couture and hence I'm answering it 
beforehand uh, for the public at large that um, Jusikutur is a very, very uh, uh, strategic addition to our portfolio. Uh, we've been eyeing this space um, where uh, we look at a women handbag kind of a brand and uh, the price point is going to be uh, more in the super premium bridge to luxury kind of a category, which I've been speaking about for a long time that we're looking at adding a few brands in, in these categories. Uh, so Juicy Kutu solves that purpose. Uh, uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, we, we've signed sort of a long-term lease. So it gives us time to build upon this brand and uh, and then reap the benefits for a longer duration of time. Uh, yeah, so that's the overall this thing uh, from a project update perspective. Um, are uh, the both uh, the uh, IFF merger as well as uh, the new plant, the new hard luggage plant, both are uh, on course. So uh, uh, the merger is already in NCLT and hopefully uh, we should be able to complete that in the due course of time. Um, hard luggage, we are, uh, the, the plant is, is very much on time. Uh, and uh, I hope that by the end of FY25, the plant will should start getting commissioned. Uh, some good news over there as well. Uh, we have also finalized our new plant head. I will make the formal announcement once the person uh, is on board. But we're getting a very senior seasoned person uh, who's been in, in hard luggage manufacturing for a very long time. Uh, and been in very good roles across all the uh, top um, players in this category. So we've, we've got a good person coming on board over there. So I'm very, very hopeful um, for our manufacturing uh, this thing. So yes, that's the update from my side. Uh, let's, we can start the, the Q&A session. That's Thank you, Abhinav, sir. We will now open the floor for Q&A. All those who wish to ask a question may use the option of raise hand. In case there's a problem at your end, you can also drop a message on the chat. We'll take the first question from Kashish. Kashish, you can go ahead and ask, please. Hi, uh, congratulations on a good set of number. A uh, couple of questions from my side. So this Juicy Kucha brand, which we have acquired, which kind of market? Is it going to be a premium segment or is it going to be the mass segment which we are going to cater to? No, it's going to be premium. Premium. In fact, it's going to be more towards super premium and bridge to luxury. So yeah, I can't hear you. Uh, am I audible? Ashish, I think there's a problem at your end. Okay, I, I'll drop back and join back once again. No issues. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyone who has a question can raise your hand or ask your message. Ask your question on the chat. We will take the next question from the line of Janesh Joshi. Janesh, you can go ahead and ask your question. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, can you share what is the term of our license with uh, Juicy? Uh, how much royalty are we going to pay? And say two to three years down the line, what can be the contribution of uh, handbags uh, to our overall top line? So... Uh... For confidentiality reasons, uh, Janesh shall not be able to give the exact terms of uh, the agreement. But I can tell you this, that uh, we've signed a very good uh, term with them. Uh, the good part is that, um, so technically the contract is 10 plus 5. So we get a 15-year license, uh, ideally. 10 years Ten years is the, is the contract period and there's an auto-renewal clause of another 5 years. So... We get a long-term contract and uh, the royalty percentage uh, is also quite lucrative. Uh, so we have a lower royalty percentage over here. Um, 
<laughs> so that's an advantage and in terms of uh, top line i would say <clears throat> women handbag overall as a category i think uh, it's a very very good category and we have been missing out on this category uh, for the lack of brands uh, and hence uh, we are now looking at uh, building it upon um, it will be difficult to say what exact top line will we garner in this but uh, <clears throat> i expect that over the uh, over the next couple of years um i believe that women handbags should be uh, anywhere between i would expect it to be anywhere between 15 to 20% of our uh, portfolio Oops. got that and sir uh, will this be a synthetic leather offering or a genuine leather offering because if i look at the synthetic leather market uh, you have capris from vip you have lavi baggett esbida so there are lot many players which are competing in that market and it is quite fragmented so to say and also i'm not too sure about juicy's positioning in india uh, given there are lot many smaller brands which are nurturing quite well so what are your thoughts uh, in terms of uh, competition given the fact that uh, you aspire to achieve a 20% of your top line from the handbags category in 2 years uh, <clears throat> see uh... whether it is caprici whether it is lavi and all these brands they are more in the mass segment jinish uh, so they operate uh, at price points anywhere between 1200 1400 rupees to say about a 3000 rupees that's the price point that they generally operate at um uh, juicy couture if i if i talk about juicy couture uh, worldwide also uh, the brand is is positioned more in the uh super premium bridge to luxury segment and in india we are still looking at we we looking at placing it in that segment itself so uh i would say that probably you know uh, we will be pricing it anywhere between 5000 to 15000 that's the kind of price point that i'm looking at now why are we looking at that kind of a price point because if i see uh there is a wide space there are very very few brands <laughs> uh in those price points so if i talk about uh, the segment of uh, 1500 to say 3000 4000 5000 also there are a plethora of brands and the competition is extremely tough over there right whereas uh, the moment you move up once the customers wants to elevate and they move up uh, so the next this thing is directly you know the likes of michael kors and uh, coaches of the world which start only at 15 18000 rupees right so and then you have again a lot of brands over there you have then you're competing with a michael kors then you're competing with a coach then you're competing with a uh, you know uh, and so on and so forth you know so beyond to obviously then you start getting into luxury and all of that uh, so this is a price point 5 to 15 uh, which is sort of Uh, a wide space there are very very few brands and and uh, you know we've we've chosen this brand uh, after having studied the market studied competition speaking to premium chain stores like shop stop uh, understanding from them where is the need gap where is the price gap available today right and hence we see that uh, we should be able to create a, a good proposition for us in that kind of a price point uh, to answer whether it will be uh, imitation leather or whether it is leather uh, it will primarily be uh, it will not be 100% leather brand because juicy kutu doesn't lend itself as a brand into leather uh, but uh, having said that uh, you know i don't know if you guys have seen guess handbags uh, in the market if you look at uh, guess as a brand uh they they really doing well and uh, they're not leather so there are different materials it's a very high quality bag uh different materials different treatments high on fashion and uh, and i think uh, there is a good business to be developed in the brand i hope i've answered your question yes sir yes sir thank you so much just one last question from my side uh, so if i remember right uh, we entered into the cst channel some time back 
and uh, i believe in 1q uh, uh, cst contributes roughly 9% uh, to a top line uh, yeah. given the fact that this channel was absent in the in the base quarter uh, incrementally it should have contributed more to a top line but i but what i have observed is that the benefit of csd is negated by fall in the institutional business whereby our share has come down from about 22% to 15% so any any specific reason why uh, the institutional business <clears throat> has come down nahi uh, so see uh, last time also when we had done that institutional business even then i had said that okay we we done a strategic uh, tie up with uh, your shoppers where uh, we did that we've done a similar sort of an exercise this year also but uh, see institutional business is something which uh, while we are focused on it and it is growing for us but however it's not like retail you know where if you've opened 50 counters every month you will get sale something or the other from those 50 counters right and you keep on building 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 upon it so few quarters institutional could be up few quarters it could be down but we focused to us institutional business but however <clears throat> you know uh, <clears throat> in terms of uh, 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 taking strategic calls with certain partners that would only be done when it is required or necessary so again insti may be do tarike ke hote hain one is where you you purely giving it in corporate lifting the second is if you are if you are building something with um uh, uh, with a chain store like shopper stop and planning some institutional sales uh, we don't classify it into retail we classify those sales into institutional because uh, then agar main usko retail mein classify karunga aur wahan pe aap drop dekhoge to then it reflects ki as if you know your sales of those stores have come down hence it has been classified into that but it was a strategic tie up with uh with a chain store and uh, we had got orders uh, big ticket order in that got it sir thank you so much and all the best thank you thank you dinesh thanks dinesh we'll take the next question from the line of rajiv rajiv you can go ahead and ask please thank you for the opportunity uh i have few questions first can you explain the indias impact on your profitability yeah so in the indias impact or uh, rather i would say the overall non cash impact is almost to the tune of a crore uh, so the way we read it internally is uh, right now my pbt is is uh, is reflecting about 2.42 uh, whereas uh, uh, if we if we take off these impacts and it's actually at 3.43 so uh, you know the new corporate office and then whatever new stores that we have opened we've also signed up a new warehouse so i think the lease rental gets uh, uh, you know uh, calculated in a very different way in 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 india so that's the sort of impact uh, which is there so we call these as non cash items so esop also if you if you look at as a non cash item so if you take off all of this uh, you can probably take off you can add back say a, a crore in in pbt yes thank you uh, next question is we have seen the store addition was soft in q1 can you guide on where it would be in h1 order this year yeah so q1 yes uh, uh, we haven't uh, announced really uh, it was just one or two stores which uh, were announced in q1 but uh, i think we've we've made it up in july uh, july we've added another four stores ebos uh, all franchisee stores uh, so i think single month abhi tak ka to highest figure hai four or five four stores in in one month uh, we've still not announced it because what we do is once we launch a store uh, we give it a two week period to to sort of iron out uh, all the issues your um, you know pos machine uh, card machines working fine software is working fine uh, you know so we do a soft launch and then uh, for about 10 days we run the store like that and then we <coughs> excuse me sort of uh, <coughs> go ahead and announce so 
H1, uh, I had said that we'll add about 10 stores. Uh, and we've already added six stores. Uh, as we speak, I think August also, we should be uh, able to open another two to three stores. So we are pretty much on target on whatever I had committed in H1. Okay, okay. So my next question is, what is the update on CDA, CSD business? So CSD is a... Uh, uh, Actually, uh, touch wood, very, very happy with the response in, in CSD. Uh, we've approached CSD in a very, very unique manner. Um, so we've created shopping shops also over there uh, in all the premium counters. We've created shopping shops. Our fixtures, our, everything looks extremely different. This is something of first of its kind which has happened in, in, in the canteen stores department. So they are also very happy with it. And we've got a very, very good response. <clears throat> so initially, uh, the idea was that we'll go a little controlled. We will not suddenly sort of open uh, all the depots, all the uh, this thing. So we were going controlled. Uh, we've seen some sort of traction. The traction is very good, actually. Uh, the sell-through is very good. Uh, sales are, are uh, in whatever limited number of these things that canteens that we've gone we've seen a brilliant response over there. So uh, now is the time when uh, we geared up and we will sort of start expanding on uh, on that entire segment. So we'll, we'll start pu pushing the uh, accelerator. Uh, there is a little bit, I'm uh, again uh, telling this up front, uh, that there is a little bit of a, uh, uh, the, our, our net realization uh, gross uh, on margins is a little low currently in this channel because uh, I had, I think, explained it earlier also that, um, you know, the file that we had presented was uh, was probably just pre-COVID and then COVID happened and the whole thing got delayed for two to three years, three years actually. So while there was a price escalation in terms of the COGS going up, but we couldn't have gone back to the file and changed the pricing because then we would have to apply all over again. And hence we took a conscious call that, okay, never mind. Uh, we'll go ahead with the same pricing, even if uh, the margin intake is lower, uh, that's fine. Uh, we'll build upon this. Uh, and once you complete an year, uh, then you can, uh, CSD then allows you for a price escalation, product replacements and all of that. So uh, once we start doing that, the margins will also uh, start getting better. But as of now, we are uh, more than margins. We are focused on uh, on increasing uh, uh, our point of sales. Uh, we are also focused on giving the uh, our defense forces personnel, the customers over there, the right experience, the right product, uh, and all of that. So, uh, and I would say that I'm very, very happy with whatever the team has been able to sort of uh, build over there. <clears throat> Thank you so much, sir. That's it from my side. Thanks, Raji. Thanks, Raji. We'll take the next question from the line of Sharad Anuragi. Sharad, you can go ahead and ask, please. Hello. Hi, yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. <clears throat> yeah, hi, Bingham. Uh, congratulations on our number. Uh, I wanted to understand the this handbag segment a uh, bit in detail. Yeah. Uh, because as you mentioned that there's an interesting gap uh, from the price front uh, for 5 to 15,000. But are we looking to onboard more brands in this particular segment? Because if we are expecting 20% of the revenue down the line, say, three years from now, uh, I think... Uh, uh, some other brands would also be onboarded. If I, yeah, so, if my understanding is correct. See, if you see, for example, in Benetton also we have when handbags, right? So Benetton may be handbags here, but Benetton is at a lower price segment, right? Juicy Couture is more a women's brand, uh, and to cater to the uh, uh, the woman who is willing to pay seven thousand, eight thousand, ten thousand rupees for a handbag. You need a conducive brand, right? With who, which, uh, with which uh, she can, she is able to relate. So while uh, I understand most of 
uh, the uh, the participants over here are men and you would have probably not heard juicy couture but if you ask women uh, you know if, uh, they would be probably aware about the brand <laughs> right so uh, <clears throat> So Juicy Couture is going to serve this particular price segment. You have a United Colors of Benetton, which again has handbags. Aeropostal also, we have handbags. Uh, so you're playing at different price points. So when I said 15 to 20% from handbags, I did not mean only from Juicy Couture. You're absolutely right that it cannot happen only from one brand, at least in the next three years. Uh, but yes, the overall bouquet will, will start uh, getting into order. And then whatever... Other brands also that we sign or uh, we look at, uh, we look at fashion brands. So handbag as a category will lend itself onto those brands also. I hope I've been able to answer. Uh, okay, okay. Just a follow up question. Yeah, yeah. Just a follow up question. Uh, this is from the price point. What I wanted to understand is. Uh, so if a woman is walking into the store and buying a juicy uh, bag, uh, do you expect the uh, working woman to buy this brand? Because from my understanding is this brand gives sort of a chick or a vibrant uh, vibe. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have, uh, <clears throat> so as of now, we also have plans of opening juicy couture standalone stores, right? Because, uh, Again, a good aspect of Juicy Couture is we've signed a lot of other categories also. So it's not only handbags. So we've signed accessories also. We, we're planning to do scarves also. Uh, we're planning to do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, keychains, key fobs, your small trinkets that you wear. Uh, you know, there'll be pouches, there'll be beauty cases, there'll be. So uh, we've also signed up, for example, hats, you know, so. <clears throat> We want to present it as a lifestyle brand. We want to present it as a, uh, you know, a, a very fashion forward brand. Uh, from a product perspective, you will have ranges which you can call as, uh, you know, you, you give up when you develop a product, you give a whole array of a basket of products. So there'll be, while there'll be something for her, uh, if she wants to carry it on the beach, if she's going on a vacation, she'll be carrying a bag. We'll, we'll be offering something to the tune of that as well. But at the same time, we'll be offering something which she can carry it every day to the office. You know, and uh, the business in that segment uh, is quite sizable, uh, right? So even if we are able to uh, see, I generally, uh, you know, I believe that Rather than focusing on the output, no, uh, what we should be doing is focusing on the input because if your inputs are right, uh, the customers are going to love it. And I think the brand, the product, pricing, all three, in my mind, uh, the fit is nice. However, customer is, is the final uh, king. So we're going to get our answers once we uh, we get closer to the launch. Uh, yeah, thank you. Great explanation. Uh, just one last question. Uh, I think in the last uh, call, call, you said that for the H1, you will be uh, you put putting down your uh, marketing uh, side of the expenditure. So from this quarter, can we expect a little more uh, expenses on the marketing side? Yeah, up? we already brought it down from Q4 to this Q1. And we further uh, gonna be raining on on the marketing expense. Thank so you. Thank you. Now, we further, we'll be further fine tuning it. Okay, okay. All the best. Thank you, Sharad. We'll take the next question from the chat. Ishpreet Kaur, you can go ahead and ask, please. Uh, hi, Abhinav. Thanks for the opportunity. Hi, Ishpreet. Uh, I uh, just wanted to understand. So there is a mention of certain brands in the annual report that the company would be selling under backline like uh, CK, Samsonite, Dell C. Just wanted to understand what is the kind of uh, agreement we have with these brands? 
No, no. So, <clears throat> uh, it was actually a typo. We we went back and we corrected that. Um, but I'll tell you where it has stemmed from. Uh, we were contemplating that uh, on the on our e-commerce, which is bagline.com, uh, we got a uh, an interest from CK, DK, and uh, Y, and a couple of other brands uh, right. to sort of come on board. So uh, the idea is we are exploring that. Uh, however, it will require some some more, uh, uh, you know, uh, preparedness of the entire IT infrastructure. So it'll have to be a plug and play where uh, if it can be a more of a marketplace kind of a model, uh, it's more in the experimental stage. So then, uh, you know, uh, when the people who were preparing the annual report and when they asked about every different channel, and we mentioned about this, and that's how it just suddenly got captured in, in the bagline uh, store or bagline overall concept. In the stores, as of now, we're, we're not introducing any of these brands. But e-commerce, uh, we are looking at that. Should we uh, should we try a, a marketplace model with with a few outside brands? But that's in the in the. Uh, as I said, experimentation stage. So um, I sh- we should be able to comment on that better once we cross that hurdle. And this would be purely from the marketplace perspective and not in terms of brand curation and and in terms of your focus towards the business in terms of uh, curation of the brands and the newer brands or the retail aspect of it. No, so if you if you see curation of brands, is the only reason probably why we would have uh, these on our website because uh, we've been focused and we've, we've always said that we are more in the fashion space, more in the premium space, and uh, hence these brands fit the bill. Uh, right. A customer walk, uh, customer uh, visiting bagline dot com, then gets a curated experience that okay, he's he's. Is getting all the the like-minded brands uh, available at one uh, this thing because if you if you see uh, today if I talk about most of the other e-commerce players they they become more of horizontal players right so you will get an unbranded to uh, branded to and if you have to buy one thing you are uh, uh, you have to go through pages of and pages either you go into the filter and start putting the brands that you want. Otherwise, slowly and steadily, what is happening is that e-commerce, most of the players, uh, except for the for the luxury ones, uh, in the premium space, there is no curation happening, right? Everything is... Mm. Amazon was always a marketplace. Flipkart was always a marketplace. Mintra was the only player which was a curated experience. And mm. I see that also dwindling Correct. a little bit. And hence, I sense an opportunity that... Uh, if you if you have a vertical play in e-commerce, so a specialty e-commerce where the customer is getting a curated experience um, of premium, not luxury luxury because luxury again, Tata Click Lux is available, Agio Lux is available, but in the premium space, that whole curated experience is missing. And hence, once we uh, you know we spoke to these brands and the brands were extremely willing and and all of that. So it's still under contemplation that can we do all of this on the on our website. Uh, retail, it becomes a little more challenging because when you're doing your own brands, you have higher gross margins, right? Correct. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> so there'll always be a biasness. You'll always be making more money in your own brands hmm. uh, rather than making money in the in the other brands because they'll be giving you a finite uh, sort of a margin. So it doesn't make sense to cannibalize your own these things in retail. Uh, but in e-commerce, uh, probably this could spin into a, a different segment altogether. So, sure. Okay. Uh, and uh, the other part is that uh, if we look at the license fee expense as a percentage of sales, you know, that's also increased, say, 50, 60 basis points, YOY, almost close to 11 odd percent. 
so uh, with ucb coming in uh, we were under the impression that maybe the license fee should be lower versus a tommy hill figure so if you could help us understand that yeah but uh, as i as i said that you know uh, there was a royalty increase uh, and since uh, uh, tommy is uh, still if you look at the overall percentage of contribution of tommy it's, it's close to 80% right and hence uh, you see the impact agar wo ucb nahi hota ya dusre low royalty brands nahi hote to Uh, the royalty percentage would have been probably even higher okay and do you see this uh, royalty fee coming down once you get to a certain scale or would it like continue being at this high level uh it's a uh, i don't know uh, uh, i can't say it with 99% it will not come down you know okay uh, okay but uh, You know, क्या होता है ये कॉल्स भी रिकॉर्ड होते हैं फिर वो लोग भी कभी सुन लेते हैं hmm. कि <laughs> मैं तो सोच के बैठा हूँ कि ये कम नहीं होगा बट आई एम फाइटिंग यू नो बट वंस यू सेट अप समथिंग फॉर द ब्रांड इट इट बिकम्स डिफिकल्ट टू यू नो टेक इट बैक या टेक इट बैक सो so 90% i would i would say that they'll probably not go, go back and what happens is a uh, lot of brands which you sign with their indian counterpart uh, the indian counterpart also has to pay a royalty right so uh, hence uh, signing with the indian counterpart is always going to be a little more expensive than signing any brand directly so uh, got it yeah peneton is also not that low on this thing because they are also an indian counterpart of the foreign entity so the indian counterpart has to pass on some to the foreign entity as well but if you look at aeropostel if you look at juc couture it's a direct direct contract contract right just one last thing so uh, based on this conversation so maybe a 12 13% ebitda margin on a sustainable basis for a long term should be doable or Uh, can higher ebitda margins also be done see uh, when we talk about long term when we talk about uh, margins i think ebitda margins uh, higher ebitda margins can be done even today right right but what i am trying to do is whatever we are earning i don't hmm. i have said this earlier also that i don't believe in burn and on philosophy Correct. so but so we first earning and then we putting that money back right know, in preparing ourselves for a uh, uh, for the next next jump you know we've been in this orbit of Correct. 70 crores 50 60 you know so earlier i was in the orbit of 40 crores a quarter then we moved up to about a 50 right. crores now we getting inching towards a 70 crores kind of a quarter hmm <clears throat> whether it is today or whether it is probably 10 years down the line uh, we're not going to stop right i have uh, huge aspirations of uh, uh, with with brand concepts and what we're doing so yeah. i would not stop uh, so for me uh, whether it is a 500 crore or whether it is a 1000 crore which is big i would say neither of them are big right if my potential is going up to a 3000 crores i will i think that 500 crores is extremely big right hmm. so i will we will keep reinvesting right so right uh, hence i believe that a 12% 13% anything between 10 to 12% of an ebitda is a good ebitda right it's a decent ebitda we not very right. extremely good but we not extremely bad also right so let's maintain that and uh, then uh, plow back that whole money to to grow you know so prepare yourself for the next 10 years right sure thank you so much thanks thanks ashwin thanks ashwin we'll take the next question from the line of kashish kandu yeah there are two Kandor. direct messages which has come which have come to me also uh, raj sure i'm not sure. able to read them because if i read them then i miss uh, uh, you know age is catching up i'm able to focus only at one thing at a time <laughs> Sure, sir. We can take the question from the chat now. You can. Yeah, sir. Uh, sir Ram Pandey. Uh, 
this year ending turnover capex guidance uh if possible give with fat margin sir fat ki calculation to mere ko samajh mein nahi aati hai kabhi income tax kuch lag jata hai kabhi kuch lag jata hai fir kabhi kuch india se ho jata hai so uh i think this year ending turnover capex have i think we have already uh, mentioned with whatever capex that we doing towards uh, uh, the plant it's about overall project was about 30 odd crores uh and we we deploying that uh apart from that there's some capex that we are also deploying towards our uh warehousing that will also entail about anywhere between 5 to 6 crores of capex uh actually the overall capex of warehousing is 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 is, is further high but can to do it in in phases so the first phase is going to be about uh Five, five to six odd crores. So that will be the roughly, and then your regular capex of few stores and all of that. So roughly that will be the overall capex. Uh, this thing in terms of turnover, uh, I had mentioned earlier on that you know the market sentiments are are not uh, that conducive right now, and which have been proven true. You can see it across uh, the retail industry um, uh, results. we have still been able to post a 20% growth so i think we uh, will try and maintain this uh, at least till h1 uh, once the market conditions improve things start happening then probably you know internally also we are looking at h1 separately and then we are looking at h2 so i am waiting for this entire diwali period i am i have my very high hopes that the diwali should be good uh, so let's let's wait and see is what i would say there is one more question from uh, mr manish gupta hi sir over the past few quarters brand concept revenues are rising faster than peers this is the case in current quarter as well does this imply brand concepts is gaining market share also how long do you expect margins pressure to continue yeah, okay yes so yes we have been growing uh, faster than our peers uh, for sure uh, which absolutely also means that we are gaining market share uh, at the same time i would say that markets are also in- increasing you know the branded segment is also increasing so uh, uh, we are yet i think too small to to comment ki maine inka market share kha liya ya unka market share kha liya wo to bhi it's still time to come but yes we've been gaining Uh, I can say that we are now available across more points. Of- Hello. Hello. Yeah. So we've been gaining. Uh, when I say we've been gaining market share, I think we've been gaining uh, consumer touch points. We've been gaining stores. We've been gaining in distribution. Um, we've been opening stores. There are a lot of, uh, you know, last when October. Uh, we had done the whole campaign and everything and i was asked also that uh, you know we've done a high decibel campaign and i had mentioned it at that point of time also that more than the consumers that campaign was also more from a b2b perspective and and very very happy to share that we getting a lot of franchisee inquiries so of course uh, we opening uh, franchisee stores so all of this is increasing our overall footprint at the same time we are increasing brands so <clears throat> i think net net we would say that we are in a in a good position uh, currently margin pressures are there but i think these are temporary pressures uh, it could rain in for a few quarters here and there or a couple of years here and there but i think uh, we have a lot uh, going for us so our manufacturing is going to kick in our base is getting larger so economy of scales is going to kick in so i think by fy uh, you know fy 26 we should start seeing the effect of all of this coming into play so yes i hope i have answered both ram uh, ram pande and manish gupta i hope i have answered your questions raj we could take the Sorry. Next Thank question. you, Abhinav sir. That there is one more question in the chat from Shinjana Mittal. Okay. Um, can you give some sense of when the IFF overseas integration would come, and some sense of Tommy's share in this quarter sales? 
Uh, IFF, I think we are already in NCLT, and if I am not mistaken, towards the end of September is when uh, you know, uh, towards the end of September is when the uh, uh, the shareholders meeting is supposed to happen, and I think after that it'll take another uh, couple of months, so four months max. So I would say that uh, we're looking at towards the end of Q3. At best, that hopefully all of this is done, but you know it's a it's a government process, so it's it's a little difficult to actually give you a date for that. But yes, we are on track for that. Um, now coming on to the Tommy, I think uh, uh, overall, uh, if you look at, uh, we still in the same vicinity of around eighty odd percent of our sales coming from uh, Tommy Elfiga. Thank you, sir. We'll take the next question from the line of Kashish Kandota. Kashish, you can go ahead and ask a question, please. Uh, yeah. Congratulations, Abhinav, on these on, on a decent set of numbers in these stuff. And three questions from my side. Uh, first question would be in terms of the what has been the same store sales growth in this particular quarter, and what is the expectation once the market improves? What kind of same store sales growth can we expect? Yeah, this quarter, uh, same. Uh, so. Uh, same story. It's a tough experiment. I like to put yeah. it to like <laughs> Prepare is G. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> like to like to be honest, if you ask me, there is a degrowth rather than a growth. So okay. um, there is a degrowth in like to like sales um, from last quarter. So hence now you see the the whole impact of, of BD. You know, so we've been able to do a lot of uh, BD, a lot of business development. Uh, to cascade over uh, like to like sort of for this thing. Uh, so EBOs, yes, uh, uh, even in across large format stores also. Uh, a couple of categories, a few categories here and there, probably we would have, like for example, uh, 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 luggage per se. Uh, we've sort of in, in certain channels, we've we've still grown. Small other goods, uh, like to like, there is a degrowth. Uh, so, but net net, if you talk about like to like, uh, uh, all across, there has been a degrowth. Okay. And I think once the market improves, we'll come back to the growth rate, correct? Yes. Yes. That's what, as we speak, uh, for example, July was better than June. So, oh. and August also, uh, we seeing some shoots. There are a lot of holidays also. So 15th is a long weekend. Right. Then we have, yeah, Rakhi is also coming up. Uh, so hopefully, uh, it's been almost one year last uh, September itself. Last August, September, se hi ye pura slowdown hona shuru ho gaya tha. So I'm expecting that, uh, you know, ek saal ka ek period ho gaya. Uh, right. I hope that now things will start looking better. Uh, sure, thanks. Uh, second question would be in terms of competitors, Sabina, where do you see major competition coming from? Is it the listed players or is it the uh, unlisted? Like we know there are a couple of players who have spent in a great amount in the marketing bit. So where are we facing stiff competition from? See, uh, I would say <clears throat> competition to har se hi hai. Uh, it's difficult to pinpoint here. In se hum direct compete kar rahe hai, un se hum direct compete kar rahe hai. And our different brands are again price positioned in a different way. So a UCB, I would say that we have we have a, a, a more difficult task where we are competing directly with some of the listeners. Right. Uh, right. Uh, Tommy, I think uh, uh, we are as it is in terms of price points, we were always a little higher. And uh, yes, a few players... Uh, in the understood space, and I'm, I'm sure you would be probably talking about a Mukobara or a National Miles. And I've been asked these questions earlier also. So <clears throat> if you look at, I think, somewhere, uh, whether it is for that growth or whether it is whatever, even if you look at today, Mukobara now, earlier, you know, I used to love their content. And I, I, uh, I admire them for whatever they have done. So there's no this thing about that. But... Today, if you if you look at whenever you open, all you see is is communication of discounting, right? So nice. there is some bit of uh, pressure happening all across. Uh, I say that 
कंसिडर दैट यू नो कंपटीशन तो हमेशा रहेगा uh, सब जगह से रहेगा मतलब तो समबडी कैन कैन ब्रिंग इन अ नॉर्मल लगेज आल्सो एंड से दैट यू नो मेरे इसमें ज्यादा फीचर हैं और सस्ता है आप फ्री नहीं बेच रहे हो बट वी आर नॉट हाउ वी आर डिफरेंट और हाउ आई वुड वांट टू डिफरेंशिएट फ्रॉम द रेस्ट ऑफ द मार्केट इज दैट द रेस्ट ऑफ द मार्केट और मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल प्लेयर्स are a category play whereas we are more of a brand play right so that's that's where our differentiation lies right absolutely correct and one last bit on uh, i was uh, regarding this recent issue in bangladesh i was seeing some of our competitors has the manufacturing plants in bangladesh so do you see most of our competitors would have the plants in bangladesh or is it just one or two players where we got to hear that no so i i know of other uh, some other players also who who have been sourcing a lot from bangladesh so uh, all the big ticket players were sourcing a lot from bangladesh so i yeah there is going to be an impact to them uh, good for us right i uh, sure i think thanks and if i can squeeze one last in this new brand which we have acquired juicy culture the kind of gross margins which will get that will be in line with the remaining products right or will it be down since i think luggage is or your sense on this thing uh i would say that uh, there uh, if if not more it will at least be same okay okay it should be more okay thanks a lot abhinav Congratulations and uh, all the best for the upcoming quarters. Thank Thanks, Ashish. Thank, Thank you. We will take the next question from the line of Kevin Cha. Kevin, you can go ahead and ask. Yeah. Hi, hi, Abhinav. Thank you. I just have uh, three questions. Uh, my first question is: What are going to be the key growth drivers to reach the five ninety nine crore target revenue? More details if you could share in terms of channel strategies. Sorry, uh, reach what revenue? Five ninety nine crore. Target revenue, five ninety nine. Where did that? Where did that come from? Okay, never mind. आप लोग सर ऐसे ही target बढ़ाते चले जाते हो हमारे लिए. Yeah, so see, the key growth drivers are gonna be uh, is what we are doing today, right? Uh, expansion of your footprint. So <clears throat> uh, whether it is large format, whether it is Uh, digital whether it is distribution whether it is mbos or whether it is our own stores uh, you know you keep on increasing your footprint there are there's still a uh, lot of markets where we are not there so a expansion uh, over there b uh, adding brands uh, white space categories you know wherever we we see that okay we are not there in the strategic category we add a brand or a product category in those categories uh, so uh, all of these are the key growth drivers these are uh, and of, of course the rising consumerism in india so you know as i said that branded play is gonna uh, is gonna rise further and further so uh, hence these are uh, the main key drivers that is that are going to be there okay thank you uh, what are what are our plans on capitalizing on the tagline channel to sell other brands in allied products uh tagline retail uh, i'm not sure uh, because uh, you know there is a finite space and as i as i answered earlier also that uh we would like to sell our brands only over there Uh, majorly uh, but when it comes to the tagline.com as a channel uh, that of course uh, you know it's a different ball game altogether we can definitely add more uh, brands over there and try and give the consumer a curated experience but at the same time you know we need to answer a lot of things at the same time we're looking uh, at tagline to have an omni Uh, sort of a play now if you have a brand which is available on the website but the same brand is not available in the store uh, how will that sort of happen so a lot of things needs to be answered uh, apart from that uh, you know all these new brands even if it uh, even if we allow a few uh, or even if we you know sort of collaborate with a few brands to come on our website and um, 
do sales. Um, I don't want to again get into the whole model of buying their inventory, keeping it in my warehouse, and then selling. Uh, it's going to increase our investments uh, drastically, right? So I would like to do a omni channel for them, or I would like to be a marketplace, sort of a curated marketplace experience for them. So for that, then your your uh, uh, you know technological infrastructure has to be. Uh, such that it's a plug and play sort of a model so we are exploring that as well so a lot of things happening on that front but uh, we will sort of uh, 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 discuss a little more once uh, internally we are we are absolutely sure about uh, which route to take okay Abhinav, thank you uh, that's it from my side and all the time thanks thanks kevin Thank you, Kelvin. We'll take the next question from the chat from Sudhir Agarwal. Uh, so he has asked, you had mentioned that Sugar Rush and the vertical will be developed into brands looking at the capacity we will have after the new plant. So what kind of initiatives have we taken or looking to take to turn these into mainline brands? Like have we started selling these in our offline stores? Have we increased the varieties in these brands? Okay. So sugar is, yes, we, we sell in a couple of our stores. In fact, and we have some variety also over there. So we, we, uh, we, sugar is the whole strategy is that we are right now keeping it mostly confined to our stores, EBOs, and we selling from there and somewhere we getting a, a decent sort of attraction also. Vertical is an interesting uh, story though. Uh, we've experimented with two models, um, in vertical, uh, in distribution space, in MBO state space. And we've taken a very, very different sort of route, very different strategy. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to share that the markets have responded pretty well, very good actually, uh, to those strategies. So uh, we're looking at building there something. Though I myself, I used to say that we will not be available in the mass market, but uh, <clears throat> we are dabbling our hand over there, uh, experimenting over there. Uh, you may ask why the depart from from the original narrative that we don't want to be in mass as well as in luxury. Luxury I still maintain. will not be in luxury, but mass I am trying to dabble my hands in. Uh, you know, to be uh, able to do something in the mass market, you need the backing of manufacturing. Right, we even we never had our own manufacturing when it came to luggage, uh, but now I am seeing that uh, the hard luggage manufacturing is on is on the horizon, uh, and hence trying to double my hand that can we actually then look at creating something which uh, you know could go into the mass market because we will have that power of pricing. So the response initially is good. I wouldn't still, uh, I wouldn't say that don't, please don't read it into this thing that, oh, now suddenly, uh, you know, the vertical will start getting very big and we'll start because they're we competing with, uh, with very, very seasoned players. We're competing with the likes of Safari of the world. And, uh, and I think they've done a brilliant job uh, in capturing that market. But, uh, and hence, uh, when you have such a tough competition, uh, we shouldn't be counting our eggs before the hatch. So we'll wait and watch. We'll see how it goes. Thank you, sir. We'll take the next question from the line of Ankur Gulati. Ankur, you can go ahead and ask, please. The marketing expense which you mentioned is going to come down in Q1, Q2. Is this more seasonality and it will go back to uh, Diwali season levels or no? I mean, you'll put more, spend more money in Diwali? Or... Q1 but Q2 is going to be less, but Q3 is going to be less. Q3 yes, because of Diwali, there will be certain ads. But as I said, by the end of the year, uh, it would have come down to, you know, the levels that we had sort of uh, had, had indicated, you know. So uh, last year, if you look at our marketing spend had gone to almost close to 8%. Right now, mm. uh, that's mm. something that uh, said that you know I'm in the business of licensing. I'm not in the business of 
making these brands. Yes, once in a while you you invest strategically, thinking that okay, we need to invest. Like for example, Juicy Couture. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a fifteen year license for me. Uh, mm. Very good gross margins. Uh, mm. Even if I invest today, it is required. You invest today, uh, and you are then able to reap the benefits over a long period of time. So, uh, but apart from that, if I talk about, yes, we invested in Bagline last year uh, and now we are seeing the results, right? So, uh, mm. H1 have opened more than 10 stores now uh, in uh, only franchisee and uh, we have a good pipeline. So, uh, it's it's growing, right? So, uh, the investments are, are subject to, you know, uh, a particular strategy. Apart from that, on a regular basis, yes, our marketing spend will never be more than four to five percent. So it was before you hired. We'll be bringing it to <clears throat> those levels. So four to five percent used to be before you hired Arjun Rampal, right? No. What? So what was that before that? More two two and a half percent. Yeah. Two, or not even that. Two to three percent. Uh. And that extra 4% you spent last year was one off. So steady state, you're saying your two to two and a half percent is now going to go to four and a half or four, right? Yeah. Four, between four to five percent, four percent, five percent, that kind of a number. And more from a strategy perspective, you have now added JC. So you're basically monetizing your funnel or channel, whatever you call it, right? Yes. From a 12 month perspective, or 24 month perspective, any other subcategory on your horizon? Uh, not a subcategory category, but yes, uh, product extensions are, are, are uh, being tried day in, day out. So, uh, small leather goods, I think, uh, there are a lot of other small items which we can get into, develop, um, you know, accessories. Uh, it's a it's a large space and uh, you know gifting for example is a is a brilliant space today uh, people looking at gifting something premium to mm-hmm. something so uh, we are developing those kind of products as well but uh, uh, who has go ahead, yeah. sorry no, no please 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 go. who has JC's apparel license in India they have apparel line as well right no, uh, as of now, apparel license, they had signed up with uh, with the group, but uh, I think uh, we need to circle back to them and check if, uh, uh, as far as I'm aware, they're also in talks with a couple of other players. So, uh, whom they find it. As of now, uh, apparel doesn't exist over here. Uh, but uh, the UK licensee, for example, is a, is mm-hmm. a big company and PDS uh, mm. runs in billions of dollars. They're the UK licensee. And they have done a fabulous job in, in creating a brilliant line in in UK. So Yeah, but the way I understand what you're doing with JC is something similar to Gap Accessories in India, right? Not the whole line, but only the Gap Accessory line. Yeah. Gap. Gap. Yeah. And, and what's, what's your experience? Uh, if I'm not yeah. wrong, that was Arvind, correct? Cap, mm-hmm. or I don't know who was it, but that subline, how did that do for whoever that licensee in India was? See, because for a small store, if you go to a mall, you end up paying 16, 17, 18% as rent. If you want to do exclusive accessories stores. So how do you see that playing out? If at all aspiration is to grow so, their exclusive stores. You should talk about uh, <clears throat> when we talk about accessories, we see women handbags is going to be the mainstay, right? So you can easily expect that 75% of the overall revenue is going to be coming only from the handbag division. Right? Another 25% may appear baki accessories and everything. Oh. Now, uh, if you uh, if you look at today, uh, the price point that I'm talking about is hmm. uh, is a similar price point as your uh, Tommy Hilfiger handbags. You have Guess as a player over there, right? Now, uh, Guess is doing 
very very mm-hmm. yeah, yeah very good understood last last thing and bit of a moon shot mm-hmm. any thoughts if jc doesn't get an india partner you want to get the entire uh, entire product range on with you or no or you think you're still not ready for an apparel line uh i wouldn't want to get into a, uh, a barrel to be honest uh, at this point of time um you know it requires a completely different uh, uh set of uh, people uh, the entire buying merchandising fabric everything is very very we don't understand that product right my me neither me nor my entire team matlab i can probably just comment ki ha yaar ye achhi quality ka t-shirt hai but you know uski exact thread count kya hai kitne gsm ka wo hai uh, we don't have that knowledge so hence uh, right now getting into that uh, will not be able to do justice and then you are uh, whom do you want to fight with you want to fight with arvind and madras and the lances of the world I mean, you know so but yeah having said that uh, in the juicy store uh, you know there is a quad set of juicy couture which is a jacket and a floor uh, mm. i don't know if you ever just do a google search on juicy couture and that's the first image generally which comes up you know and yep. uh, 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 when the brand uh, the brand was hugely popular in the us at one point of time where the likes of cindy crawford pamela anderson all these top yep. models mm. they used to wear mm. juicy couture yes yeah yeah mm. so Uh, now that quad set is a very very integral part of that whole brand story so mm. we are in contemplation that the ebo that we open probably we'll just dedicate one shelf to mm. those quad sets you know but that's about it uh, we're not looking at getting into a parallel completely so it's it, it's more to give that consumer a brand experience and a brand identity correct yeah uh, so these this product you will import right wherever they are manufacturing yeah. you are not going to import. no correct all, right. all the best thanks 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 thank you ankur we'll take the last question from the line of nicer parek nicer you can go ahead please yeah hi uh, hi abhinav uh, thanks for taking the question just couple of them so you mentioned that you know uh, obviously there is weakness in the market and lower sssg and things like that our online to that effect has you know grown very well i think 33% buy or buy but there is weakness on the physical store front and things like that why do you think that is and uh, you know how do you think the next few quarters will be uh <clears throat> see online uh, also if you see uh, ek to online ka kya if you comparing it with last year's q1 online mein kya hota hai your base keeps increasing right so and then there is you you start calling something as a run rate so uh, run rate obviously in q2 q3 q4 itself wo dheere 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 run rate has been increasing but if you look at q1 i would rather say that even e-commerce was a little subdued right uh, probably the rate of growth which they had came down or whichever ways second in e-commerce there was also a huge pressure of discounting and capturing of lower asps now if you keep lowering your asp you might be gaining higher in terms of volume but uh, i consider that not as a very healthy growth you know so your value growth should always be slightly higher than your volume growth right and rather being the vice versa where uh, you gaining on volume but you know you're not gaining so much in, in terms of value which means either you're discounting higher or your asps are coming down uh, <clears throat> uh, having said that if you look at uh, sorry i what was the second part of your question Uh, how do we see that going forward like what i'm trying to get to is that is it that uh, you know physical source is it that are we seeing weakness in tier 2 tier 3 so I, i was trying to understand that is there a geographical play because of which we have no, a different is... online offline growth yeah, this was a pan india player matlab at, at the end of the day customer kitna kharidega matlab after covid for the next 2 years uh, consumers went berserk right yeah. 
and then uh, uh, there has to be some consolidation which which happens you know how how much will the end the number by <laughs> true true <laughs> and so how long do you think this consolidation do you think it takes up three four quarters for this to normalize yeah, that's the reason i am very hopeful that uh, you know by this diwali this diwali should be good so my my i am quite hopeful that uh, it should start bouncing back okay understood uh second question was sir on you know when we look at uh, ucb aeropostal it's been maybe 18 months uh now since the brands have uh, we've added them but it it seems that the pickup is not a- as great what is your evaluation how would you kind of judge those two brands and how they have done yeah so <clears throat> i would say that uh, you know uh, you're right that Uh, it's been about fifteen, eighteen months that we signed. However, uh, you should never calculate it from the signing this thing because it takes about good seven, eight months, nine months to uh, to develop products. You know, so the whole process. Uh, once you sign, then the designers will start designing, right? Uh, they'll take about uh, you know at least forty-five days to sixty days just to design it on the. in the computer present it to the brand take approval then get into sampling you're developing everything for the first time add 2 to 3 months of production and 1 month of shipment time so once you calculate all of this i would say that we started launching for example ucb luggage uh, started getting rolled out only from december november december onwards right used to be small leather goods i can say that we started rolling mm-hmm. it out from towards the end of q2 last year uh, calendar q2 agar mai bolu so yeah. uh, no uh, uh, financial q2 august september uh, july august september wala period tha that's when august september is when we started rolling out now <clears throat> slg agar aap dekhoge uh, ucb slg recently we got a ranking uh, report from shopper stop and very very happy to share that the number one brand in smaller the goods uh, ranked in shopper stop is tommy hill figure and the number 2 is united colors of benetton right uh, so uh, our target was that you know within one year we will break in the top 5 here i would say that less than one year uh, you know we are the second highest brand so the number 1 and number 2 position is both us right right so uh, we are gaining traction as we speak luggage uh, but at the same time yes i would also say that there are a lot of uh, uh, there's still a lot of work to be done uh, specifically if i talk about uh, more on the handbag space uh, we've recently introduced handbags in 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 a few counters we've got a good response but i think still the option count the overall collection coming through uh, to give us one or two more seasons and you'll start seeing the color of united colors of britain you know so the color will start coming got it uh, so last question on manufacturing uh, so two parts with one our own plant uh, you know how is that going and what's the timeline and uh, things like that we'll be a, we in fact uh, as of now we are in almost uh, i would say 10 days ahead of schedule uh, but hopefully we we continue on on this path uh, so very very happy with 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 the way that plant is coming up uh, and i just said uh, we also getting an industry veteran uh, on board to run that plant uh, very seasoned professional uh, so hopefully uh, we'll have some good news so that should start production by when fy25 so beginning of fy20 no no end of fy25 and end of it okay and uh, on the on the merger uh, you know you mentioned that we, we are progressing on the legal side but operationally on the back end are you doing something so that once the merger is concluded legally we can you know just bring into action very soon and we don't yeah, waste the work has already started over there as well so we are for example increasing our client base over there uh, <clears throat> there are two to three new clients who who actually come us uh, come to us and uh, you know sample developments and all of that have already started so um, 
जाया उधर भी मेहनत चालू है सर मेहनत फुल फुल फ्लैजेड चालू है एंड प्रॉबली दिस होल बांग्लादेश सिचुएशन माइट बी अल मोर हेल्पफुल टू अस थैंक यू थैंक यू सर ऑल द बेस्ट थैंक्स 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 थैंक यू नाइस सर अभिनव सर इफ यू मे दस वन लास्ट रिक्वेस्ट इन द चैट फ्रॉम जतिंदर अग्रवाल जतिंदर इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गो हेड एंड आस्क जतिंदर ओके सर सिंस दैट वॉज द लास्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर द डे डू यू हैव एनी क्लोजिंग कॉमेंट्स नो आई थिंक इज गुड आई थिंक आई एम आई एम फिटी हैप्पी विथ Uh, with the way things are going, and happy with the results as well. So, uh, hopefully, uh, things uh, will be, uh, you know, brighter going in the future. Thank you, thank you all the participants for joining on the call, and thank you to Abhinav sir for answering all the queries patiently. That brings thank us to the end of the conference call. You may all disconnect now. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.